Recently, there was a camping ban. The Louisville Metro, the city council here in Louisville, uh, banned camping for anybody over um, three acres. If you're in a public park and it's over three acres, you're not allowed in the park anymore. They've it's a crackdown. It's a massive wide crackdown all across America. They passed one similar one in Denver, um, Colorado, which is where our black police chief went, Robert White. So, and he had actually showed restraint, saying that that would be the last thing that they would do is arrest somebody who was camping or was homeless. Uh, when we've had no such reassurances with this Metro City Council. So it's bullshit. Um, I wrote an article about this, so this is more or less for the uh, illiterate folks, people who don't read or are too lazy to read. Um, so I'm just basically just going to read it to you. So the recent 2012 camping ban against Louisvillians passed unanimously by Louisville Metro City Council 23-03 were absent on July 26, 2012. But really it was just a fig leaf. The camping ban was designed to criminalize being homeless and a declaration of war against Occupy Louisville. The camping ban was initiated out of Greg Fisher's office and the legislation was sponsored by Metro Council members Mary Woolridge, Democrat District 3, Rick Blackwell, Democrat District 12, who both had some misgivings about it just as Tina Ward Pugh and Tom Owen did, but that didn't stop them from voting against the 99%. The co-sponsors are Dino's, Democrats in name only, Madonna Flood, D24, lied when she told WFPL, this has nothing to do with Occupy Louisville. They can protest wherever they see fit. I support them. It's bullshit because we can't protest wherever we see fit. Founder Square is ours, the public. That is our square. You don't have a D to it, so you had no right to put any sod on our land. You owe yourself $7,500 and you're lucky we don't turn around and sue your ass for coming up on our land. You ain't got a fucking deed to it. That was given to the people by the original founder, by Adam and Eve, Miss Adam and Eve Louisville founder. George Rogers Clark put that fucking piece of ground down for all of Louisville. It ain't yours, Mayor Fishers. It ain't yours. Attica Scott, a friend of Occupy Louisville, held an aggressive... She's also an aggressive cheerleader for working class families. Said that Metro Council. Said that Metro Council doesn't want to address the myriad of issues Occupy Louisville has brought to the forefront, such as poverty, homelessness, housing, and education inequality, inequity. Uh, wrote Philip Bailey of WFPL. I would have voted against the camping ban since it's clearly designed to attack Occupy Louisville in an attempt to quell dissent. Attica Scott on another day mentioned that city council aren't the ones who control Louisville, but that the backdoor dealing shadowy business money interests do. So this decision, the camping ban decision, comes during a presidential year, uh, which historically has a higher turnout compared to the primaries or the general election. Kentucky's primaries this year had a 12% turnout rate and a 25% turnout rate in the governor's race in November of 2011. So how much more? Probably not much more. Maybe 50%. Maybe 50%. 25% came out last year. 11% came out a few months ago. So that actually says it indicates a lower trend, but presidential year raises it up. People think they're doing something when you vote for Obama or Romney, and if you're in Kentucky, you ain't doing shit. You ain't voting. You ain't helping nobody. No matter if you vote for Obama or Romney, Louisville will go to Obama, and Kentucky will go to Romney, which means Romney will get all the electoral votes, so it don't matter if you vote for either one of them. The only way you can be relevant is if you vote for a third party, like Jill Stein. So if you want to be relevant, Kentucky, vote for Jill Stein. If you want to piss your vote away, go ahead and vote for one of the Democrat or Republican candidates. Vote for Coke or Pepsi. See if things get better. See if you know anything about W.E.B. Du Bois' electoral strategy. Having a turnout rate that is lower than the majority of Kentucky citizens eligible vote means that none of our governments have any le democratic legitimacy. All the governing forces are illegitimate since economic inequality is at the heart of the worldwide, worldwide occupied movement. And Louisville's got plenty of economic deprivation to go around. Real politics suggests that those representatives who relies on the few registered voters in Kentucky be re-elected as compared to, say, relying on the media to pair it to two-party courtocracy. Corporate, corporatocracy or TV ads, they shouldn't be attacking the 
This recent declaration of war on the 99% is disappointing because there are several ways that Mayor Fisher and Louisville Metro could have handled this differently. As the city of Edinburgh and the city council of Los Angeles has demonstrated, Occupy Edinburgh on November 24, 2011 was able to get Edinburgh City Council to grant Occupy Edinburgh and the worldwide Occupy movement, including us. So the city council in Edinburgh has given us credit, official recognition, when Louisville Mayor Fisher is not. Edinburgh City Council was the first government body to grant such a distinction. Occupy Los Angeles has the informal support of Los Angeles City Council who passed a resolution stating their support for the local and worldwide movement. Stay as long as you need. We're here to support you. City Council President Eric Garcetta told the campers on LA City Hall's front lawn yesterday. What's our president say? What's, was it Jim King? Jim King? He says he is King. He ain't Martin Luther King. He's a white king. He's a white oppressor king like King Louis, who Louisville's named after. He's not a democratic king. He's not the king of a democracy. He's the king of a dictatorship. Louisville Metro Incorporated didn't have the deed to Founders Park, which means that it's not even theirs to fucking begin with. It's not yours to begin with. Louisville Metro Incorporated, even though they're trying to sell it to Cornish companies, it's not even yours and you're trying to sell it. First you're building on it and it's not yours and now you're selling it to Cornish companies, LLC, for dirt cheap, for like nothing. Cornish Companies LLC is the same company that owns 4th Street Live and Louisville Gardens. And it has an option to buy Founders Park for $1 a year for 99 years, which is illegal if the Kentucky Constitution still has any meaning today. Only contracts of the 20 years, 99 years, that's too long. A dollar a fucking year, a hundred fucking dollars for a hundred fucking years for that park? That's what Louisville is for? That's what Greg Fisher and the Louisville City Council is for? That's fucking ridiculous okay that's some bullshit you're gonna sit there and say we're not doing right and you're gonna try to fuck us over with by putting a side on there yeah right you piece of shit you're fucking over them the, the uh, Louisvillean people by selling it to some huge corporate conglomerate that has a base out of Baltimore Maryland so we're exporting our wealth outside we're getting outside foreigners fucking Marylanders are buying motherfucking our parks so we're selling our parks to Marylanders and we're not allowing our children to be able to play on it. Louisville children don't get access to the public parks here in Louisville, but Baltimore CEOs and his kids, they get access to it for $100 for the next 100 years. That's some bullshit. I'm sure Maryland's a beautiful state, but we got to keep money here in Louisville so we can revitalize our communities and have an explosion of culture, cooperation, solidarity, and working people's unity. David S. Cordish is the person who owns the Cordish Company. He's the chairman of the Cordish Company, which is a billion-dollar company. David S. Cordish also owns Talp GP LLC, a foreign limited liability corporation, and Bayou Place GP LLC, another foreign limited liability corporation. David S. Cordish is an active member of the American Israeli Public Affairs Committee, a.k.a. APAC. APAC finances over 50% of the U.S. political campaign is the main reason why Israel gets away with all their war crimes and terrorism against the Palestinian people, such as the Gaza War. In 2008-2009, when Obama was first elected because they are afraid that a black man was going to ruin their unlimited carte blanche of killing and attacking anybody that they want to attack. But, surprise, America's still backing them. Obama's still backing Israel. So Gaza and the West Banks are concentration camps. We ain't allowed to send food to them. Cynthia McKinney tried to send food to them. We ain't allowed to do that. The two-state solution is obvious. The real terrorists are the Israelis, who, it's interesting with Israel, it seems that those who were formerly oppressed have now become the oppressor. They were the victims of the Holocaust, and now they're the Nazis. That's Israel, and that's been Israel for decades. In fact, almost since 1948, since it was created out of thin air. David S. Cordish, a former lacrosse play player, is the chairman of the real estate division of the Cordish Company and a member of the board of governors at the Cordish Company. The Cordish Company owns Center City in Louisville, Daytona Live, 4th Street Live, Indiana Live Casino, Maryland Live, Pla Power Plant Live, Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Hollywood, Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Tampa, and Seminole Paradise Live. David S. Cordish, a 72-year-old casino man, a member of the 1%, was celebrated a few years ago by Business Journal when he fought local government politicians for two years and he spent $5 million in order to get permission from the public to build Maryland Live, a casino in Baltimore where the Cordish Company headquarters are located. 
So they was fighting. He knows the petition process. He knows political process, and he's willing to spend the money in order to get casino gambling here, which is what the governor was supposed to promise. So it's no doubt that Cordes is sniffing around Louisville because we might get casinos. David S. Cordes wound up winning in Baltimore in the election for a zone change by 20,000 votes. So David Cordes won that political battle. And you got a lot of money. Makes things easier. In 2005, Donald Trump sued David S. Cordish, alleging that David S. Cordish stole the lucrative deal with the Seminole Tribe of Florida to build what is now Cordish's Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. The case dragged on for years before settling out of court. United Workers wrote a letter to David S. Cordish detailing the violations happening at his Inner Harbor property. In the three-year-old letter, United Workers says that paying folks below a living wage is contemptible since it denies them human rights. Also, David S. Cordish is being charged with not providing reasonable limitations of working hours, having no periodic holidays with pay, and workers were being harassed for organizing activities, including making threats to shut down entirely if the Human Rights Zone campaign continues. So David S. Cordish and the Cordish companies are not friendly to working class families and labor unions, and our rights are not upholding human rights. They're making money, uh, and making money is fine, and making money and human rights are not countervailing forces. You should be able to make money and to be able to respect human rights. They should not be contradicting. Greg Fisher, just like the brave, righteous, wonderful, honorable man that he is, wrote a letter to a homeless man, a homeless Louisvillian, J. Dave Barfield, telling him to either pay the entire LG&E electric bill for the entire Occupy Louisville group for camping at Founders Square or to get the fuck out. That's our mayor. That's how he handles his care. He gets some courier to deliver a threatening letter to a homeless person at Founders Square. So it wasn't to the leadership. It was to uh, the homeless folks who were there. Did Mayor Fisher care about Dave Barfield? Did the mayor care if one of his citizens, well, he probably thinks they're subjects, you know, like a king, Louisville, a fucking tyrant, we're going to worship Louis. King Louis the Sixteenth, when the French Revolution, the fucking French people chopped Louis's head off. That's the legacy Louisville wants to carry on. Yeah, that's clear with Mayor Fisher. So in the letter, Greg Fisher states that the general public wasn't allowed access to the park, which is a total fucking lie. He's a total fucking lie. I mean, he doesn't give a shit about the 10,000 plus homeless people that are hiding within the bed in the cracks of Louisville, but he does give a shit you know, about whether or not there's access to the park, which there was access, so he lies about that. The people were more than welcome. Pam Newman and Jay Dave Barfield uh, invited the public on their morning show here in Louisville and said, come on down, you know, uh, have a picnic with, with us. We more than welcome, you know, allow you to have it. Plus, there was open green space. So if you didn't want to talk with Louisville, Occupy Louisville, you had another spot that you could go. And every time I went there before then, just go down there. I mean, now definitely, but I mean, go there during the day and nobody is going to be there. It's not being used. The general public doesn't use that uh, that park. It's not used for jack shit. That park isn't being used for anything. It's just a pretty spot to, uh, you know, look at. But in terms of actually having any usefulness or utility or function, it has none. So uh, we welcomed them with wide open arms. Anybody in Louisville could come to Occupy Louisville, Founders Park, or Jefferson Park, or 3208 West Broadway uh, Avenue, and have a picnic with them. So uh, several trips. I, you know, I already said this. Yeah, uh, I've never seen it used since Occupy Louisville by anybody. Nobody's ever there. City official later on had thanked me for giving him some overtime hours for the Founders Square occupation. The city was paying him on the payroll a little bit more money because we were out there camping, um, putting our tents out there and marching and demonstrating and uh, telling the powers that be what we actually thought was up, right? Shaking our fist of power. So Occupy Louisville is responsible for creating jobs and fattening up other working people's paychecks uh, with that time and a half overtime pay. So that's one of the many things that Occupy Louisville has brought about. It's brought about an entire different dialogue Occupy Louisville has brought up. Uh, Occupy Louisville, specifically, my tent was donated to the cause, and there is a Mexican couple that eventually got up and out and went on to bigger and better things. So there, there have been people who have gone to bigger and better, bigger and better things coming out of Founders Square. Um, change the dialogue the sod even though it's bullshit that he did it without our permission it looks better it's beautified so that's another change occupy louisville has brought about 
the uh, dialogue about the homelessness, the dialogue about the entire narrative now that the 99%, the imagery the 99% offers. So Occupy Louisville has changed the, uh, the dialogue here in Louisville. Um, I'm not totally for sure if it's 100%. I know the media is trying to fuck us over, and I wonder if the people are believing the media or if they're still in solidarity with us. So hopefully they're still in solidarity. Occupy Louisville. Viva la Revolution.